It's coming to Quincy, and it's a game changer. Fiber is the fastest technology available, and Adams is bringing fiber to the home. Nothing else compares to fiber, and Adams will be connecting Quincy neighborhoods to this lightning-fast internet and telephone service with no gimmick pricing and local service. Find out how your neighborhood can become a fiber hood. Just take the quick survey at followthefiber.net. Adams, the better and now faster way to connect. Let's say you got a golfer in the family and you just don't know what to get him. He's got bags. He's got shoes. He's got new clubs he just bought two weeks ago. Um, he's just went in there, just bought a pull card no, yesterday. But he like, I know he likes golf, and I, I just don't know what to get. So here, I got a perfect solution for you. It's called a gift certificate. We can make the gift certificate any denomination that you want, and it's always good here at r, &R Golf. When Scott and I purchased these two rocking chairs, our intention was to rock together on our porch in our old age. But when Scott was diagnosed with cancer, our lives drastically changed. When discussing Scott's final wishes, we decided the best choice was Hanson's Spear Funeral Home. We liked the home-like setting, and we knew we could trust the Spear family to honor our wishes with a personalized video and the Bible Scott used daily. Hanson Spear even arranged a special time for our granddaughters who were having a difficult time. They took care of everything. Your state farm agent, Charles Schultz, can help get you to a better state. From cost to coverage, Charles can develop a plan just for you. This is Charles Schultz. Call me at 224-6665 or drop by my office next to County Market at 48th and Broadway. And together, we'll review your insurance needs. Welcome back to Blue Devil Gym, the start of Western Big Six Conference mm -hmm. play as the Blue Devils play host to the Rock Island Rocks. Tim Kincher with Matt Longo, Paul Erickson, our producer on this Friday evening. After tonight, Quincy will play three straight road games going up to Oswego tomorrow evening. Early start time, by the way, folks, 6.30 varsity game. We hope to be on the air about 6.10 tomorrow night for the game between the Panthers and the Blue Devils. And then next weekend, Quincy will head to the Panther Den to take on United Township and then head to Springfield to take on the Senators. And then back home for two games before the Christmas holiday as it will be Galesburg and Monmouth Roseville coming to Blue Double Gym the weekend after that. Here's the starting lineup for the 3-1 and one Rock Island Rocks under the dean of Western Big Six coaches, Tom Siegel. Tyler Hall is 6'5", senior, headed to Montana State next year. He's averaging 15 points and 3.5 and rebounds per ballgame. Jason Jones, the 5'10", junior, He's averaging 10 points and three rebounds per ball game. C.J. Neville, a 6'1 junior, averaging 10 and a half points and just under two rebounds per ball game. Alonzo Cole, a 6'4 junior, averaging nine and a half points and five rebounds per ball game. And Larry Dixon, a 6'1 junior, averaging just under five points and four and a half rebounds per ball game. Hall, Jones, Neville, Cole, and Dixon, the five starters for Rock Island on this Friday evening. For the Blue Doubles, they're going to go with their normal starting lineup. Lincoln Elby, a 5'9 senior, averaging. 12 and a half points per game and three, just over three rebounds per ball game. Reagan Tenhouse, 6'2", senior, averaging just under 10 points and eight rebounds per ball game. Cameron Gay getting the start tonight despite missing practice Wednesday with the flu. 5'9", junior, Cameron Gay, averaging just over six and a half points per game and two rebounds. Jacob Job, 6'3", junior, averaging seven points and three rebounds per ball game. And Parker Bland, 6'4", sophomore, averaging just over six and a half points but eight rebounds per ball game. LB Tenhouse, Gay, Job and Bland, the five starters for Quincy in their Western Big Six Conference opener. And I look forward to the challenge. I mean, it, it was funny to watch uh, Brody Francis right there because right when his turn was to run to this corner of the gym right where we uh, uh, announced that, he and Coach Siegel almost went face-to-face -face with that uh, the lit torch that he had there. They both handled it pretty good. But you say he's the dean. How many years is, does that This mean? is 10 or 11. Oh, so he has been around for a while. Good for him. 
I'd say now, I, I think second in the conference now would be Coach Polite up at East Moline. I think so. I'll have to double check on that. That's, that's the dean right there. Quincy in their home white uniforms with blue numbers and trim, and Rock Island in their black road uniforms with gold numbers and red trim. Tyler Hall is going to, no, Alonzo Cole is going to jump things up yes. with Parker Bland. And away we go, and Rock Island has the opening possession of the ball game. And Quincy comes out in a 1-2-2 zone. With it on the wing is Larry Dixon. Up the sideline to J Jason Jones. Turnaround jumper from Cole in the paint is no good. Cameron Gay has the weak side rebound for Quincy. Finds Lincoln Elby, and Elby will bring it up against the pressure of Jason Jones. Elby will go right, gets cut off, gets it to 10 house to high post, back to Lincoln Elby, and the Devils will set up their half-court offense. First possession of the game for Quincy. Elby dribbles across, has it left wing, gets to Cameron Gay, right back to Lincoln Elby at the Blue Devil logo. Elby penetrates top of the key, hesitates, keeps his dribble alive, throws up a shovel shot, no good. Ten outs with the offensive board, put back good. And that's what Reagan needs to do. He just needs to follow those shots up as Rock Island very quickly down court. Larry Dixon with it at the uh, opposite end. To Jones, cross court, he finds Tyler Hall. Hall goes right wing. Now they try and go high post to Cole, pass deflected. Jones finds Dixon, but it's thrown away by Ten House for Quincy. Good nice. hands by Reagan Ten House. Elby good. over the top to Jacob Job. Job will bring it up the sideline, get it back to Elby in front court. LB uses a screen from Parker Bland. Left wing Cameron Gay. Gay will go high post to Bland. Bland looks for a cutter. Nothing there. Looks for a receiver. One dribble. Throws it away to Tyler Hall. Hall has it in transition. Crosses over. Leaves his feet. Gets it to Jones. Jones with a little hook pass in the paint. And they work it back out to Alonzo Cole. He wanted to go high low. Couldn't. Goes right wing now to C.J. Neville. Now they find Jones out front. Right wing to Neville. Working against the double zone. Jones has it up top. Left wing now to Hall. He'll take a 23-footer, and it's too strong. Weak side rebound. Falls in the hands. And the putback is up and in. Nice shot yeah. by C.J. Neville. Good, good weak side rebound. Cole is a big boy in the middle, isn't he? He's got to be a football player. Cameron Gay with it on the near sideline. Brings it middle of the floor to Lincoln Elby, who calls out the offensive set against the man-to-man -man Rock Island defense. 2-2 two -two our score. We played almost two minutes of this ball game. Elby gets a screen. Now leaves his feet. Almost throws it away. Does throw it away. Taken away by Neville. Neville will go the other way. Go up for the shot and score. Well, he protected the ball quite well going on there. It looked like he took that extra step, but he, he did it good enough that he got away with it. And full court pressure by Rock Island. Cameron Gay makes a nice catch. Gets it to Lincoln Elby. Lincoln Elby turned it over last time. He has to make better decisions than that against this Rock Island defense. Elby has to pick up his dribble to guard against the steal. Gets it to Jacob Job. Job gets it right back to Lincoln Elby. Elby calls out the set. Double high post offense here. Blance has the screen for Job. And rolls off it, and Joe threw the pass. It was deflected, so it will stay with Quincy. It wasn't the cleanest uh, pick and roll, was it? No, and, and Lincoln right now, is, I don't want to say he's struggling. He's sort of like trying to feel out what type of pressure he's going to get. I think by game's in, he'll be perfectly fine. Looks a little jittery. Good inbounds play by the Blue Devils here. Ten outs with a nice post move. Jump, uh, turn jump hook is good. Okay, very nice. I, I, li I like the patience there. Four for ten outs, four for Neville. Here's a 15-footer from John Jones, and it's good. Jason Jones has a basket. It's 6-4 Rock Island. Do you think we want to get in a running game with him? No, no I do not. No, I don't either. Elby with it across the timeline. Beats Jones off the dribble. Stops, goes back to Cameron Gay on the wing. Gay will penetrate. Angle pass to Lincoln Elby. He'll fire a fadeaway three and hit it. Yeah, and that's, that's going to be a big, big asset if we can hit these outside shots, which will open that up for... Parker Bland in for Reagan Tenhouse in for Jacob Jones. 7-6, Quincy leads. Cole will throw it up top to Jones. He'll rise for a three, and it's short. Rebound tipped and controlled by Jacob Job for Quincy. He'll take off in transition. Job will take it all the way to the basket. Wanted to shoot, but had it deflected out of bounds by Dixon. Nice strip by Larry Dixon. Yes, it was good hand. Quick hands. You, you're going to have to be aware of every situation, every shot, every dribble. They're, they're just constantly reaching and, and slapping at the ball, that being Rag Island. Here's Elby with it out front on the inbounds play. He will turn and back it up and set up the half-court offense. Quincy leading 7-6. We played three and a half minutes of this game. Elby crosses over, takes it to the hoop, protects the ball, misses the layup, and the rebound comes down to Neville for Rock Island. Hit a head pass, finds Tyler Hall for the left-hand layup. Yeah, that was beautiful. I mean, he was he was full stride and laid that up with his left hand. One, because he can jump within an inch and a half and laying it into the basket, too. 8-7. And now a foul on Jason Jones as he tried to go behind Lincoln Elby for the steal and got fouled for the reach. Yeah, he probably just got him 
just on the back of the hand going up. You're, you're, that's what they teach you to do is slap up at the ball instead of down, but obviously you got enough of the wrist to see that. First foul of the game is called on Jason Jones, 5'10 junior. He takes over for C.J. Carr for Rock Island. C.J. Carr's down at SIU Leverage Zone. Carr was a three-year starter for Rock Island. He was the engine that drove that team last yes, year. Yes, he was. Here's Mike Dade who's checked in for Cameron Gay. Dade gets into some trouble but finds Lincoln Elby. Elby goes opposite of the screen. Now back passes to Parker Bland. Bland with one dribble. Rise for 17 feet. No good. Rebound along the baseline to Jones. Jones being pestered by Joe. But Jones handles it quite well. Stops across the timeline. And they work it around the hall. Nice mid post pass to Dixon and a reaching foul call on Jacob Joe. Yeah, I, do. I think Parker almost sold that charging call, but I didn't, just didn't think there was enough contact. And then he got a reach in foul after that. So, first Quincy foul belongs to uh, Jacob Job, his first, obviously. And Tyler Hall, no, will give away to Jason Jones, who will inbound for the Rocks, baseline right of their basket. Jones has handed the ball by the official, floats it into Cole, right back to Jones. He couldn't catch up to the pass. Made a perfect pass to the uh, lady sitting right there in the front row. 8 7, Rock Island leads, 3.38 left to go, opening quarter. Elby. We'll walk it up. No pressure from Jones until he gets to the midcourt strike. Bounce pass right wing to Mike Dade. Dade, high post to Parker Bland. Bland wanted to get Job the ball, but couldn't. Bland handles it, gets to Lincoln Elby. Out front, Elby will drive right wing. Back pass to Mike Dade. Open three, Mike Dade. Bingo. Yeah, nice shot. Had his feet set. Nice drive by Lincoln Elby to pass that ball out to a wide open Michael Dade. 10-8, Quincy leads. 3:08 left to go first quarter. Cole with it in backcourt. Bounce pass to Jones. Now a cross-angle pass to Cole to get it over the timeline. Cole, double team, gets it further in the corner to Dixon. Larry Dixon, bounce pass out front to Jason Jones. Now to Tyler Hall, right wing to C.J. Neville. Off the sideline to Hall. Hall to Cole, out front to Jones. Tried to go back to Cole, pass deflected by Elby, stolen away by Quincy. Good hands. Three turnovers on Rock Island. Elby across mm -hmm. the timeline, Blue Devils lead at 10-8. Elby will bring it to the middle of the floor and set up the half-court offense, gets the screen from Bland. Elby will take it all the way to the hoop, lay it up with the right hand, and get it to roll in. I love the way he protects that ball. He's constantly looking for a pass, but yet using his body to protect the ball so that if he does have that layup, he's, he's, he's away from the defender, and that was well done. 12-8, Quincy leads. Elby with five points. 2.20 left to go first quarter. Jones will dribble towards left wing. Gets it high post to Neville. Neville will get it back to Jones, and Rock Island will reset. Jones will dribble towards right wing. Goes high post to Hall. He goes underneath the Cole. Nice play, and Cole gets the layup. Very, very nice. Good good movement by uh, the Rocks right there. 1 2 2 zone by Quincy. The middle was exposed, and Rock Island took advantage of it. Here's Elby across the timeline. Quincy leading 12 10. Joe goes high post to Bland, works it left wing to Dade. Dade goes high post, Lincoln Elby. Deep three, top of the key, Lincoln Elby. Almost banked in, no good. Dade with the offensive rebound. 14 footer, he pulled the string on. Had his own rebound for a moment, now steals it away. Mike Dade, far sideline, gets it back to Lincoln Elby midcourt. Now Parker Bland. Bland bounce pass to Tenhouse, mid post. Tenhouse working on Hall. Jump hook is short. Rebound belongs to Neville for Rock Island. Neville dribbles it off his heel. Nice diving play by Bland, but he knocked it out of bounds. No, they say off of Rock Ooh, Island. That's a tough call. He had a better look from, from right being down there, but it sure looked like that went off of us. But we'll take a great hustle by Parker Bland. Great hustle. Parker Bland checks out. And Clayton Wyrather checks in for Quincy. Yep. First up for Rock Island is William Miles, a 6'7 junior. Like that hustle. That can carry you over quite a ways. Elby wanted to pass it. Wow, how did he not I, go over and back? I, I don't know. Cameron Gay's checked back in for Quincy as well. So it's Elby, Cameron Gay, Mike Dade, Reagan Tenhouse, and Clayton Wyrather on the floor for Quincy. Gay will catch the ball right side of the offense. Now middle of the floor, Mike Dade. Back to Lincoln Elby. Just over a minute to play first quarter. Quincy leads 12-10. Tenhouse catches right wing. Free throw line extended. He will attack the post. Stops high post. Don't Looks for a receiver. Gets it to Dade. Dade's floater in the lane is no good. Gameron Gay with the putback. No good. Rebound tipped twice and Dade controls it for Quincy. To Lincoln Elby for a three. Go! Bingo! You can bottle this first start right here for a first quarter. They have, they have done a lot of good things, the Blue Devils. Attacking the offensive yes. glass has been the major key here with Quincy leading 15-10. High post, Miles goes opposite to Dixon. Three on the way, left wing, good. And they come back and match it. Larry Dixon with a three, and it's 15-13. Quincy leads, 21 seconds left, first quarter. With possession, right? 
to be ours since yes, this it second will. quarter. Lincoln Elby has it working on Tyler Hall this time. Elby spins to get away from the five count. Cross court finds 10 outs. 18 footer Reagan, 10 outs. Off the rim, no good. Dixon has the rebound with six seconds left. Dixon far sideline for Rock Island. Gets it to Hall. They don't realize how much time's left. Now Cole will shoot from 20 and hit it at the buzzer. Alonzo Cole just calmly took a 20 footer and buried it at the end of the first quarter to give Rock Island a 16 15 first quarter lead. Back with the second quarter in one minute on 103 9 to Fox. When Amy's brother passed away, her family went to Hanson Spear Funeral Home. It's not about you know, the death of the, you know, the family member. It's about celebrating a life. They're very family oriented as well. They're, you know, traditional and they want to make you feel like, you know, you're almost, you know, part of the family. And that's what we really liked. If I had to sum up Hanson Spear in a word, it would be compassionate and loyal. It would be like family. Around here, people matter, and relationships are built on trust. That's the way it is at Town & Country Bank. Real people who like things simple, honest, and done right. And our roots are right here, so we're truly local. If you already do business with us, then you know how good banking can be. And if you're not, well, maybe you should. Town & Country Bank. You'll like how we do business. Part of the HNB Bank family. First quarter, he's now four for four from three-point land. I, I, I like that first quarter. I saw a lot of good things. Bland wide open, takes it up strong, gets fouled by William Miles. That, that was almost a whistle before the foul even happened, but I'll take it. I thought it was a good block from here. Miles' first foul, only the second team foul on Rock Island. And Coach Siegel's not upset about the call. He's no. upset at Miles for letting Bland be wide open to begin with. And, and wide, wide open would be a better terminology. There wasn't anybody within him. Parker Bland's free throw, no good. Bland now 6 of 11 on the season. Quincy now 24 of 52. We, we've got to start hitting these free throws. Second free throw from Bland. No good. And he fouls Miles trying to get that missed free throw back. That's just frustration. We've seen that over the years as, as broadcasters. He, <laughs> as he, players. Yeah, as, as players. It's just so frustrating. You're at the free throw line and you know it's going to miss it, so you take off for it, and you, you're always going to be a split second late, and that's where you pick that foul up from. Quickly the other way, Dixon has it in the front court. They work at the Tyler Hall. Now right wing to Dixon. Larry Dixon back to Tyler Hall. They'll take it towards left wing. Jason Jones has it between the circles for Rock Island. Those three players plus Cole and Miles on the floor for the Rocks. Cole gets it to Tyler Hall. Right wing three on the way is short. Long rebound. Will just go out of bounds. And it'll be Quincy Ball far corner. Who's their leading scorer? I, uh, for the year, Tyler Hall. 15 oh. points again. Yeah, he, he's not afraid to shoot that ball. Well, he's a Division One signee, yes. so probably a good idea to shoot. Albie gets it across the time high to Reagan Tenhouse. Pretty much top of the key, Reagan Tenhouse. Comes left wing to Lincoln Elby, right on the Blue Devil logo. Elby will take it middle of the floor. Elby will go left wing to Bland. Bland will go back to Elby. Devils don't look like they're set up right on this no. offensive set. Elby gets a high post screen from Reagan Tenhouse. Elby yo-yos the ball, far wing. Now goes high post, Parker Bland. Bland will attack the basket. Stop mid-range. Put it up, no good. Ten outs with the putback, no good. Rebound fought for, and Cole takes it away from the crowd. Outlet pass, Jason Jones. Jones steams into the front court. Elby cuts him off, and then the pass was fumbled. Now Miles has it stolen away by Elby along the baseline. A reaching foul called on William Miles. Yeah, it's going to call a little push. He, he thought he had possession of it, but the Blue Devils actively, hands actively defensive, created just a little bit of a conflict for them right there, and we've got a... C.J. Neville's going to come in for Rock Island. He'll replace Alonzo Cole. And DeJour McQueen will check in. He'll replace Jason Jones. Mm -hmm. They leave Miles on the floor with his two fouls. 6.39 left to go, second quarter. Rock Island leads 16-15. That was our end of first quarter score. Some pressure from Rock Island in backcourt. Elby and Tenhouse dealing with it. Tenhouse back to Elby. Elby just now crosses the timeline, hounded by Larry Dixon. Now Cameron Gay has it, gets it back to Elby. Nice catch by Elby. Now Elby will drive, 
stutters, get it to Jacob Joe. Left wing three, Jacob Joe, bingo. And we talked a little bit about that off the air, that it'd be nice to see him step up with some of those outside shots, and yes, he does right there. Larry Dixon, high post, slid to a stop and traveled with it. Yeah. He just he was going a little too fast for his feet, and he slid that foot, so that's a good call by the official. Six turnover on Rock Island. Only two for Quincy. Carson Gay makes his first appearance as he replaces his brother Cameron. Go 2-2-1 two, two, here. Elby with it, right sideline in backcourt. Long diagonal pass finds Carson Gay. Gay will attack the basket. Fires from 15 and hits it. Yes. Who needs to get loose when you're Carson Gay? Good warm up. He was ready to come in when his name was called. 20 to 16, Quincy leads. 5.45 left to go, second quarter. High post, it's Nettle. He'll take it to the basket, lay it in with a left hand. With his good, good hands and get around those two defenders. He had a nice easy layup to go to the basket. Here's Elby in backcourt protecting it. And close to pass to Carson Gay. Gay will attack the paint again and lost it on the way through. It's still loose, still loose. Gay goes underneath, gets it, and then tried to pass it, and it's stolen away by C.J. Neville. Neville with it in backcourt, 20 to 18, Quincy Lee. Tyler Hall gets it just across the timeline. Coach Siegel calls out the offensive set. 1-2-2 two, two zone from the Blue Devils. Hands up. Bounce pass to Neville. He goes left wing to Dixon. Back up top to Neville. Right wing now Hall. 22-footer Tyler Hall. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Going to have to get up in his face. Yeah, he's, he's got some length to him. He's got range on that jump shot. LB far sideline. Pulls up just inside midcourt. Had it poked away. Now just blindly throws it over his head, and it's a timeout called by Coach Douglas on the near sideline to avoid the turnover. Full timeout called by the Blue Devils. We'll take it with them. 21-20. Rock Island leads. 4.50 left to go. Second quarter here on 103.9 The Fox. When Andy Douglas became the head coach of the Quincy High Blue Devils, he wanted a fresh start and a new look, starting with a locker room. The first place he called was Landmarks. You're looking at the finished product. Wall picks logos, inspirational quotes, and even window treatments. Each application was custom designed and installed by Landmarks right here in Quincy. The window treatments are, are one of my favorite parts. They got uh, kind of the wood feel. Uh, we're able to see out uh, and see what's going on in the locker room, and uh, the players can't see in, so that's kind of a special thing. But. Uh, has one of our favorite quotes on it, the image of one projects the image of all. It's a quote that we use with our program, our players. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a great addition to our locker room. It, it, it adds a lot of spice to it. Wall picks, screen printing, embroidering, vehicle wraps. Let Landmarks give your home or office or locker room a fresh new look. Landmarks, make your mark. Quincy ball at midcourt, Blue Devils trailing Rock Island, 21-20. 4.50 left to go, second quarter. Tim and Matt with you on this Friday evening, the opening of Western Big Six Conference play. Go to it. Carson Gay gets it inbounded to Mike Dade. And a hand check foul called on DeJour McQueen. His first, team's third. It's not a, not, not a bad foul. Team's fourth, excuse me. You got a new ball handler in there, and, and I think they're just going to pressure him to see how he was going to handle it the first time. Mike Dade in for Lincoln Elby. Dade with it as the Devils go four across the free throw line from wing to wing. Job tried to throw a pass out of the double team, and he threw it away. Now a blind bounce pass that Blam chases down for Quincy. Here's Dade in transition. Crosses over. Two on one. Shovels it out. Carson Gay. Left wing three on the way. Too strong. Weak side rebound. Knocked out of bounds by Jason Jones. Quincy ball. Yeah, I, I think Jason Jones thought maybe that, that Jacob Job knocked it out of his hands, and I probably wouldn't argue with that too much, but it'd be blue double ball underneath their own basket. Jacob Job took a big swing, Yes. but the official said that Job hit it off the hand of Jones. Dade makes a catch in backcourt on the inbounds play, and trying to shed himself at DeJour McQueen. Stops short, gets it to Reagan Tenhouse. Tenhouse almost turned it over, gets it to Mike Dade. Dade left wing to Carson Gay. Gay gets a screen from Parker Bland. Carson Gay has the top of the key, gets to Bland left wing. Thought about a three, wisely doesn't pull the trigger. Now Ten House high post, gets it to Carson Gay. Gay backs it up to Mike Dade. Like now that. Dade will call out a new set. Yes. Dade gets a screen from Bland. Now hands it off to Carson Gay. Gay gets a screen from Bland, has the top of the key. Gay left wing to Mike Dade. Dade gets a screen from Parker Bland. Dade hesitates and a nickel dime blocking foul called on Rock Island. Call it on Alonzo Cole. 
and his first team step. Go ahead. Cole talking to his coach, saying they got to walk around. They got to talk around those picks, and I think that's uh, probably a true statement. You got to let your teammate know that there's a pick coming, so we can get around that. D'Angelo Hicks makes his first appearance of the game. Six-five senior for Rock Island. And Jason Jones back in for the Rocks as well. Lincoln Elby back in for Quincy. It's Elby, Job, Dade, Bland, and Tenhouse. Job goes high post to Bland. Work at the Mike Dade left wing. Pass deflected but still gets to Lincoln Elby. Elby will rise for a three right wing. And it rattles out on it. Rebound Cole for Rock Island. 21-20 Rocks lead and have the ball. Jason Jones bounce pass to C.J. Neville. Neville got away with a walk. Yes, he did. Shovels it to Jones, and Jones will set up the half-court offense for Rock Island. Bounce pass to Neville. Neville, double team, steps around Day, passes to Jones. Jones gets it to Larry Dixon, now to Cole, far wing. Back to Dixon. He'll ride for a three that's short. That's an air ball. Saved by Neville to Alonzo Cole. Cole with it left wing. Goes in the corner to Neville. He'll drive baseline, rise up, shoot and score as he got around Tenhouse. Oh, he got way up there. Tenhouse was set up for the charge, and Neville just jumped around him. 23-20, Rock Island leads by three. 2.46 left to go, first half. I'll be on a dribble drive, shovels it to Dade on the wing. Dade trying to use the screen from Bland. Goes right wing to 10 outs, now to Jacob Job. Job will think about a shot, but go out front to Dade. Dade will call out a new set, gets the screen from 10 outs. Dade hesitates, now drives it to the basket. Leaves his feet, gets it to Lincoln Elby. Ball fake, wanted to penetrate, has to kick it out to Dade. Wide open three, Mike Dade, bingo. He's got two of them. And ties things up at 23 with 2.16 left to go first half. Jones with it in backcourt. Crosses the timeline with a bounce pass to Larry Dixon left wing. Back up top to Jones. Jason Jones will walk it towards the middle of the floor. What's he not pressuring as far out tonight, no, Matt? not near as far. Elby with a near steal, but called for the reaching foul. That's okay. It's only a 13 foul with two minutes to go. Go for the steal. If you get it, then you might get a layup. But you better be quick getting down the court because they're going to be chasing you. 201 left to go. First half tied 23-23. Rock Island ball far sideline on the offensive side of midcourt. Neville will inbound to Jones. Job at the point of the 1-2-2 zone in between the top of the key and the volleyball line. Last week he was between the volleyball right. line and midcourt. Yes. Here's Cole in the paint. Stops, rises, shoots, and scores. He's a strong boy. He gets his body around you. It's going to be hard to stop him. Seven points for Alonzo Cole. 25-23 Rock Island lead. 100 seconds left first half. LB floats a pass to Jacob Joe. Joe will penetrate, get it to Ten House. Ten House has Dade wide open and gets it to him. Dade splits two defenders, throws up a runner. It's no good off the back iron, and Dixon has the rebound for Rock Island. Double dribbles, gets it to Jason yes, Jones. Did. Jones at the volleyball line, right side of the offense. Jones, top of the key now to Dixon. Wanted to go left wing to Neville, does so now. Neville on a dribble drive. Gets all the way to the basket, goes around Ten House again and yes, scores. Yes, he does. He's done that twice. He is quick with that first step, and then he... Instead of driving to the basket, he sort of jumps out a little bit, and his leaping ability is spectacular. Ten outs, cross four pass to Jacob Job. He'll rise for a deep left wing three that's no good. Rebound along the baseline, belongs to Hicks. He oh, double he dribbles, dribbles, shovels dribbles it to Jason well. Jones. Jones mm -hmm. tries a pass that's deflected by Dade, picked up by Hicks. How Hicks will back pass to Jones. The last two guys have double dribbled the ball. 46 seconds left to go first half. Rock Island may hold for the final shot of the first half, leading 27-23. Here's Neville, right wing to Jones, further on right wing to Cole, back up the sideline to Jones. He goes underneath to Dixon, jump hook is good. Larry Dixon with five points, biggest lead of the game for Rock Island at 29-23, 25 seconds left first half. Elby gets it across the timeline to Bland. Bland one dribble, bounce pass to Dade. Dade will get it back to Elby. And a 30-second timeout called by Quincy with 18 seconds left, first half. They, we'll keep it right here. They, they are definitely quick with their hands. They are constantly hounding you, the, that being Rock Island. And the one thing that I've taken from this, they like to score in bunches. They they, they get on a roll there, and they, they can pop them in there pretty good. They're, I'd like to see what their shooting percentage is. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, their shooting percentage is pretty high right now. Well, they're doing a really good job, Matt, of working the ball either outside in in the middle or inside out on the sides of the floor. Yeah. You know, if they get it down to low block on the wing, then they kick it back out for a possible three. But if they get the ball in the middle of the floor, they're either attacking the basket or going high-low. Yeah, they, they, they do a nice job. And the Blue Devils have been there for the most part. Just as soon as you make a mistake, they're ready to pounce on it. And that, that just takes a little bit of wear and tear on you. I believe the Blue Devils, like you said, before they went to that timeout, I think they'll be going for the last shot. I'll be with it right wing to Joe. Back to Elby, middle of the floor. 
Dade goes back to Orr. LB can't get it to him. Eight seconds left, and it's poked away from behind out of bounds by Jason Jones. Yeah, uh, Coach Douglas a little upset, not running what he wanted. you got to set those picks and get around them. Six seconds left to go. First half, Quincy ball at the scorer's table. Ten outs wanted to go backcourt. Couldn't. Dade came and met the pass. Gets the player out of the way. Gets the ten outs. Baseline yeah. jumper on the way. No good. Bland with the putback. Is it good? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, got to count that. Far side official said it was good by Parker Bland. His first basket of the game. We go to halftime. Rock Island leads Quincy 29-25. It'll be Rock's ball to start the second half. 29-25, Rock Island leads. Back in two minutes, Blue Devil Basketball, 103-9 the Fox. Federated Insurance is a lot like the family businesses we help protect. For 105 years and counting, Federated has shared the common values that have served our clients well. Federated Insurance, it's our business to protect yours. Call Tony Reese and Quincy at 223-4623. Your State Farm agent, Charles Schultz, can help get you to a better state. From cost to coverage, Charles can develop a plan just for you. This is Charles Schultz. Call me at 224-6665. Or drop by my office next to County Market at 48th and Broadway. And together, we'll review your insurance needs. Let's say you got a golfer in the family, and you just don't know what to get him. He's got bags. He's got shoes. He's got new clubs he just bought two weeks ago. Um, he's just went in there, just bought a pull card no, yesterday. But he like, I know he likes golf, and I, I just don't know what to get. So here, I got a perfect solution for you. It's called a gift certificate. We can make the gift certificate any denomination that you want, and it's always good here at r and Golf. When Amy's brother passed away, her family went to Hanson Spear Funeral Home. It's not about, you know, the death of the, you know, the family member. It's about celebrating a life. They're very family oriented as well. They're, you know, traditional and they want to make you feel like, you know, you're almost, you know, part of the family. And that's what we really liked. If I had to sum up Hanson Spear in a word, it would be compassionate and loyal. It would be like family. It's coming to Quincy, and it's a game changer. Fiber is the fastest technology available, and Adams is bringing fiber to the home. Nothing else compares to fiber, and Adams will be connecting Quincy neighborhoods to this lightning-fast internet and telephone service with no gimmick pricing and local service. Find out how your neighborhood can become a fiber hood. Just take the quick survey at followthefiber.net. Adams, the better and now faster way to connect. Choice in between, and he just basically wanted to see if he could draw charges, and Neville jumped around him and scored. Yeah, I mean, that's the old school defense is when somebody drives the line, you get, you got the baseline, you got to get your foot out of bounds, not give him anything, but his, his feet are so quick. And like you said, once once he gets to that defender, you're almost helpless because if you're not going to charge him, he's going to jump around you, and his, jeep, his jumping skills are, like I said earlier, very, very, very good. So. I, I like what the Blue Devils did. It shows that they're more than capable of playing with one of the top teams in our conference. Just a couple of mistakes, but a team like Rock Island is going to take all over that, and then, and they did. And that's I think that's why they got the lead. They they pressure you into doing something that maybe you're not used to doing or, or practicing, and sometimes you sort of get out of out of rhythm, and then that's what they want, and they take advantage of it. Quincy did a very good job of staying with Rock Island the first half, mainly because they were just crashing the offensive boards that one possession what they had at least three offensive yeah. rebounds before they got the ball to go in that kept uh, Quincy in the game in the first quarter especially and in the second quarter you're right Matt I think it's a cumulative effect with with Rock Island's defense they make you speed up so much that sometimes you just get so ragged you start making uh, bad decisions and throwing bad passes and then and the Rocks just take advantage of it going the other way you know you hit it on the nose that first quarter they were great at going to the offensive boards in the second quarter didn't have near as many opportunities to do that. So I'm sure that's probably something that Coach Douglas and the staff is talking about is, you know, look what we did in the first quarter when we had that lead when we attacked that basket. But the hindsight about that, if you attack that basket and they get the rebound, they're going to be down They're going to be down the court that quick. 
That, and that's another thing Rock Island did, especially in the first quarter, Matt. You know, I'd write down a basket for Quincy. I'd look up, and, and Rock Island was right. already within 17 feet of the basket. They just got the ball over the top, and instead of dribbling it against pressure, they were throwing it over the top. Two or three passes, they were inside the three-point arc attacking the basket. And, and, and that's what you, you try to get teams to do stuff, and you try to take advantage of it. And if they, if they feel that they can hit the offensive boards, being Quincy, Rock Island knows that they've got guys crashing that board, so they're going to release, and as quick as they are, they, they get it down court. So as much as you like to do that, you got to start thinking it's the right times and the wrong times to do that. And the right time was that offensive rebound there by Parker Bland as the buzzer went. Is you, you've got to, you've got to have somebody there to make keep them honest as well. Lincoln Elby with eight points, all in the first quarter for Quincy, four for Reagan Tenhouse, all in the first quarter. A three from Jacob Job, a basket right at the buzzer, as Matt mentioned, from Parker Bland. A basket from Carson Gay and two threes from Mike Dade for the Quincy total of 25. C.J. Neville with 10 points, and all three of his baskets in the second quarter were carbon copies of each other, as I mentioned, driving from the wing and getting around Reagan Tenhouse down on the block to, to bank in short little five-footers. So 10 points for Neville to lead the Rocks, five from Tyler Hall, a basket from Jason Jones, seven points from Alonzo Cole, and five from Larry Dixon for the Rock Island total of 29. It was Rock 16-15 at the end of the first quarter. And Rock Island leads it 29-25 at half, and Rock Island will have the ball to start half number two here in about five minutes or so. And you know, just it, it came down towards the end of that second quarter, Matt, right. to some some uh, shot selection from Quincy as well. Uh, there were a couple times where the Blue Devils, I think, took threes that necessarily are there anytime you want them, and probably threes that Rock Island would say, "Yeah, please shoot that," so we can go the other way with the long rebound. And you got to be shot selective. You got to be, you yeah, know, yeah. Where, where are the rest of your players at? I've got the ball here, but if I do shoot and I do miss it, do I have people in there that can get that rebound? And I mean, there's so many things going into decision making and the right decision making. And you know, I always tell the the kids in the in the sophomore game of our soccer games is that you're with the big boys now. You've got to be a lot quicker with your thinking. You've got you got to read that play. You got to say, oh, "I'm going to take that shot where the rest of my players," or "I'm going to make that pass." What am I going to do after that pass? And, and it's the same thing as here. It's when you're at the varsity level, that game is so much quicker, and you have to think so much more. And uh, and the Blue Devils have done fine with it. It's just that you, you just make one mistake, and that team's right there to pounce on you. Yeah, Rock Island just seems to. If you make a mistake, it ends up uh, you're taking the ball out of bounds underneath the basket after they've made a shot. So. And then honestly, I don't think we've seen their quick quickness. I mean, if we were ahead, maybe in the fourth quarter, and they come out with that full fork press and trap. I mean, I think they're quick. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think that we have seen them like the like the sophomore game. All right. That's how they got back into the game. So I think. Rock Island's just playing some good, solid defense, but I don't think they've reached their peak against us yet. Well, they really haven't extended the pressure. No, they're, they're letting the Blue Devils get the ball in midcourt and then picking up at midcourt and applying tough pressure, but they're not extending the pressure to really make the Blue Devils' life miserable, trying to get the ball from the opposite free throw line into the offensive end. So we'll see how the second half goes, and if Quincy can continue to play well and, and, and kind of make it a half-court game. Uh, last year when Rock Island came here, Matt, I believe it was a 33-31 Rock Island lead at the half, and that was made probably a little quicker than Quincy wanted to play, and then Quincy had that uh, lull in the, yes. I think it was in the third quarter last year, and Rock Island pulled away for a double-digit victory. So that's what Quincy has to avoid tonight is that lull to where they go, say, five possessions without scoring, and Rock Island's able to capitalize and, and turn this up four-point halftime lead into a double-digit lead. And, and the best part about our job right now is when you come out after halftime is you can almost see the first possession offensively and the first possession defensively of what the adjustments that coaches feel they need to do out there. So we'll, we'll keep a close eye on that and try to relay that to the, the people that are listening as well. So, you know, halftime's a strategy talk. I'm, I'm sure Coach Douglas saw some things, and I'm sure Coach uh, Siegel. Siegel. I went down and talked to him before the game. Um, a good friend of, of ours, their soccer coach, uh, passed away on last Sunday, and uh, he was their uh, manager for the basketball team as well. And he, he passed away to cancer, and he left a, a wife and a, a four-year-old son, and his wife is, is pregnant and due in February. So I went down and gave my condolences from the soccer program, and hopefully that family will uh, move on. An unfortunate, un unfortunate situation for them. We'll take a 90-second break, come back with the second half. Rock Island leads Quincy 29-25. Blue Devil Basketball, 103-9 to Fox. When Scott and I purchased these two rocking chairs, our intention was to rock together 
on our porch in our old age. But when Scott was diagnosed with cancer, our lives drastically changed. When discussing Scott's final wishes, we decided the best choice was Hanson's Spear Funeral Home. We liked the home-like setting, and we knew we could trust the Spear family to honor our wishes with a personalized video and the Bible Scott used daily. Hanson Spear even arranged a special time for our granddaughters who were having a difficult time. They took care of everything. It's coming to Quincy, and it's a game changer. Fiber is the fastest technology available, and Adams is bringing fiber to the home. Nothing else compares to fiber, and Adams will be connecting Quincy neighborhoods to this lightning-fast internet and telephone service with no gimmick pricing and local service. Find out how your neighborhood can become a fiber hood. Just take the quick survey at followthefiber.net. Adams, the better and now faster way to connect. Already in the second half, and Rock Island comes out with a set play at the half, and they run an alley oop. And now Parker Bland with a rebound dunk for Quincy after Tyler Hall had a baseline alley oop dunk. So we've had two dunks to start the second half. 30 seconds in, it's 31 27. But again, crashing those offensive boards is what Parker did as Rock Island takes the shot, and Parker Bland gets the rebound out, lets it to Cameron, Cameron Gay, Gay with it. Back passes to Lincoln Elby. Thought about a three, goes underneath the 10 house. A flop and a charge call. Yeah, I don't think there was as much contact as what it showed him flopping to that ground, but he sold it well. 6-2-10 house. Knocked down the 5-10 Jason Jones, and Jason Jones acted like Charles Barkley ran him over there. And we've extended this 1-2-2 press here. Tyler Hall with it in backcourt, crosses timeline. 31-27 Rock Island leads. We played a minute of the third quarter. Bounce pass to Larry Dixon. He gets it to C.J. Neville. Middle of the floor now, Alonzo Cole. Cole will go right to Jason Jones. Now middle of the floor, Tyler Hall. 23-footer Tyler Hall. Bingo. Jacob Jones got to get out there and respect Hall's shooting ability. Yeah, and Andy Douglas, Coach Douglas, is letting him know that as well. 34-27, Rock Island's biggest lead. Bounce pass finds Job across the timeline. Job top of the key. Hammered by Jason Jones to going for the steal. And then they're just not going to let back, let off on defense. Nope. They're constantly going to be reaching, jumping, switching, grabbing, everything you can think of. 6.36 left to go third quarter. Blue Devils trail 34-27 and Quincy ball far sideline. Elby drifts into backcourt to receive the inbounds pass and brings it up the middle of the floor. High post, Reagan Tenhouse catches. Looking for Bland, mid post, goes instead to Elby. Elby sees Bland come high post to set a screen. Elby starts left, goes right, gets it to Jacob Job. Job on a dribble drive. To the paint for the left hand. Circus layup is no good. Rebound, Tyler Hall for Rock Island. Takes off in transition. Hit ahead past Jones. Jones to the basket. Misses and is fouled either by Elby or Bland. And Jones is uh, along the baseline. He's going to get up all right. He got fouled pretty good. I think it was Lincoln Elby. It was Elby, his second, team second. We only had eight fouls in the first half with the two teams. We've had three here in the first minute 47. I think you're going to wipe that ground up a little bit. Wipe the ball off is what the official is going to no, do. No, they are. So Jason Jones will be at the line for Rock Island. He's 7 out of 13 for the season. Rock Island shooting 70% as a team. That's more like a free throw shooting percentage. Maybe even a tad bit higher. First free throw good by Jones. His third point of the game. Biggest lead for Rock Island at 35-27. Second free throw in the air. No good, and Bland has the rebound for Quincy. 35-27, Rock Island leads by eight. LB in backcourt. Over the top, Cameron Gay, middle of the floor. Takes it right wing to Jacob Job. Job, yo-yos, wow. and gets a screen from 10 outs. Now goes underneath 10 outs. Good catch by 10 outs. Shot block foul call on Jason Jones, and that's his third personal for the point guard of Rock Island. They'll make a substitution real quick here, too. It'll be two shots for Reagan Tenhouse. As 
D'Angelo Hicks will check in for Rocky. Now shooting foul, I know those people listening, it, it may not seem, they always wait till the first free throw is shot right. before they send the guy in. Free throw in the air by Tenhouse. Good. Hit the lot of the rim and fell through. Mm -hmm. Quincy, one of three on free throws tonight. 35-28, a touchdown lead for Rock Island. But Tenhouse has one more free throw. Nice get section tonight. All in different types of uniforms. Tenhouse, second free throw, good. Six points for Reagan Tenhouse. It's a six-point Rock Island lead, 35-29. Once he settles back into the half-court zone, Tyler Hall with it, far sideline. Floats a pass middle of the floor to C.J. Neville. Neville goes right wing to Larry Dixon. Dixon will now run the point for Rock Island offensively. Let's see, a 1-2-2 zone with Job at the top of the key. Cole catches, hands off to Neville, right in front of his coach Siegel. Now Hall rises for a left wing three and hits another. That's eight points in the quarter for Tyler Hall. 38-29 Rock Island lead. Eight points in the quarter, 13 in the game for Hall. Diagonal pass finds Parker Bland. Dribble drive to the high post. Shot blocked by D'Angelo Hicks. Spinning with it is Neville in transition. Now Neville keeps his dribble alive. Gets it right wing to Dixon. Ball fake. Takes it around the arc. Gets it to Neville. Right back to Dixon. Dixon with a head and shoulder fake. Drives to the paint. Throws up a runner and gets it to go down. Oh, Derek just slowly putting a slow kill to us right now. This is a big offensive series right here. 11 point lead. Cameron Gay rises there for a three go. and hits it. They answered that well and a good timeout by Coach Douglas. A 30 second timeout. Third timeout used by Coach Douglas. 4.51 left to go in the third quarter. Rock Island leads it 40 to 32 and now they say a full timeout. So we'll take a one minute break. Rock Island leads 40-32 on 103.9 the Fox. When Andy Douglas became the head coach of the Quincy High Blue Devils, he wanted a fresh start and a new look, starting with a locker room. The first place he called was Landmarks. You're looking at the finished product, wall picks logos, inspirational quotes, and even window treatments. Each application was custom designed and installed by Landmarks right here in Quincy. The window treatments are, are one of my favorite parts. They got uh, kind of the wood feel. Uh, we're able to see out uh, and see what's going on in the locker room. and. Uh, the players can't see in, so that's kind of a special thing. But uh, it has one of our favorite quotes on it, the image of one projects the image of all. It's a quote that we use with our program, our players. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a great addition to our locker room. It, it, it adds a lot of spice to it. Wall picks, screen printing, embroidering, vehicle wraps. Let Landmarks give your home or office or locker room a fresh new look. Landmarks, make your mark. Back to action here after the Quincy timeout. Rock Island inbounds the ball to C.J. Neville. Rocks lead Quincy 40-32, 4.45 left to go third quarter. Man-to-man -man defense now from Quincy. Neville working on Cameron Gay. Gay Neville spins, goes right high post to D'Angelo Hicks. Cole will cut along the baseline. He was open for a moment, now working on Bland. Turnaround jumper from the block. Fadeaway is no good. Bland has the rebound for Quincy. Outlet pass Lincoln Elby. Alby across the timeline, crosses over, has it middle of the floor. Wanted to drive it to the basket, couldn't. Gets it to Cameron Gay, middle of the floor back to Alby. Lincoln Alby will drive, kick it to Job, who had a bounce off his face uh, out of bounds to Rock Island. That's just an unforced error right there. I think you're going to see some quickness on defense. I think the Blue Devils are really going to attack this now, try to get back in here. I know it's only eight, but you don't want to get any, you don't want to get up in the double digits here. Three subs for Quincy, Carson Gay. Mike Dade and Clayton Wyrather check back in for the Blue Devils as Quincy goes back to a 1-2-2 zone. Hall rises from 23 and hits it. Mm. Tyler Hall with three threes in the quarter, 11 points in the quarter, and it's a 43-32 Rock Island lead. Devils are trying to get their defense set up, and Tyler Hall said, well, I'm going to shoot it from 22 if you're not going to guard me, and he buried another three. Here's Bland, dribble drive from the top of the key. Lots of contact and a foul called. On Alonzo Cole. Coach Siegel says that Parker Bland pushed off. Cole called for the foul, his second. Team's third. Rock Island's getting their little groove thing going right now. They're feeling pretty good about themselves. Well, you mentioned their shooting percentage at, the, at halftime, and they haven't done anything to disrupt that here in no, the third not, quarter. Not at all. Bland's free throw, no good. Parker Bland 0 for 3 from the line tonight. Quincy 2 out of 5. 
which makes them 26 of 56 for the year. I, I did see him grab his shoulder getting up. Not, not that I think he hurt it. He just sort of stretched a little bit because he came down on it hard. And Bland misses both free throws. Well, Parker Bland is playing with a torn labrum in his left shoulder. Yes. That's his strong shoulder. So I would imagine any contact on that shoulder probably sends, sends a little sting towards his body. Hall rises for a right wing three. Hall buries a right wing three, and he's feeling it right now. Yes, he is. You can you see it in his game. 46-32, biggest lead of the game for Rock Island. Dade with a baseline jumper, and he hits it. Got to slowly make good choices and get back into this. 46-34, Rock Island leads by 12. Here's an idea, guard Tyler Hall. High post, Alonzo Cole, back pass to Larry Dixon. He drives, rises for a fadeaway jumper, no good. Tip up is good by number 24, Prince Dilworth, who he, checked in. He almost tipped that, tipped that in going down. Yep. He didn't reach it at its peak, but he still got a nice little tip on it and used the backboard. 48-34, Rock Island leads by two touchdowns. Elby thought about a three, dances left wing, now gets it to Gay. Ball fake, penetrate, 15-footer on the way, banks in. Beautiful bank shot. Love when a player uses that backboard like that. Gay with two baskets, four points, 48-36, Rock Island leads, and the Rocks would love to trade baskets with the Blue Devils yes. the rest of this game. Dilworth with it left wing, gets it up top to Dixon, high post to Hicks. Hicks has it stolen away from behind by Dave. Yeah, he's got to be strong with that ball. Good defense by the Blue Devils always. Coach Siegel really on his bench. They didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> well, he's telling his players, yes. if you catch the ball, you got to be strong with it. Elby gets it to Gay. Gay will dribble drive. Rise from 15 and back iron no. Rebound tipped and controlled by Dixon for Rock Island. Dixon middle of the floor in transition. Left wing to Dilworth. Back to Dixon. Now to Tyler Hall. Hall, blind pass to Cole in the paint. Takes it to the hoop. Three-footer is no good. Mistimed his jump. Why rather had the rebound. Lost it to Cole. Misses the putback. Rebound loose and a foul called on whom? I don't know. I mean, I, I see him, Cole, looking at his arm, but I didn't see any contact. Who'd they call it on? Why rather yes, for a hold. Did. His first, team's third. Reagan Tenhouse checks back in for Quincy. William Miles mm -hmm. checks back in for Rock Island. 48-36, Rock Island leads by a dozen. Wide open underneath, yeah. Dick score, or Hicks scores. you got to be aware of that pass. That, that was just a perfectly executed inbound pass. 50-36, Rock Island leads. Elby thought about a runner, instead goes to Bland. Ball fake, takes it to the paint, puts it up. Get in there. Missed it, and the foul on William Miles. Yeah, Parker went up for that shot. I think he just kept just a smidge of his foot still on the ground, so there's no traveling call. Fourth team foul, third personal on Miles. Bland at the line to shoot two. He's 0 for 4 from the line tonight. And he makes the first. Thank you. Looks like he stepped either a half or a full step to the right to square his shoulders to the rim. Second free throw, good. Bland with six points. It's a 12-point Rock Island lead at 50-38. 90 seconds left, third quarter. Hall floats a pass to Larry Dixon. Dixon double team goes over the top. Wild pass, and it's off a hand out of bounds to Quincy. Yeah. Just a, really an unforced error. I mean, they, they should be in no hurry to really try to score. They should run their offense and get that open shot. Ten outs, inbounds to Elby. Elby will race up the center of the floor, go left wing to Carson Gay, back to Elby. Elby crosses over, trying to free himself from Tyler Hall. Pass to Dade right wing, back to Elby, middle of the floor. Dances towards left wing. Pulls it back, gets to Gay. Gay stops, gets to LB far corner. LB guarded by Hall. LB brings it around the arc, gets it to Mike Dade. Sets his feet for a three that's short, partially deflected, and out of bounds off of Quincy. Carson Gay, right off his foot. C.J. Neville back in for Rock Island. Jacob Job in for Quincy. Neville replaces Hicks. This, this is where if Rock Island just really needs to take their time and, and wait for the nice, patient shot. Instead of rushing it up and trying to force yourself into trouble. They're, they're in control right now. 50-38, Rock Island lead. Dixon with it. Cross-court pass to Tyler Hall. 25-footer on the way. Off the rim, no good. Bland has the rebound for Quincy. Dade with it in transition. Mike Dade goes left wing. Tried to, and Hall stole it. And fouled by Mike Dade to stop the transition game. Oh, just a quick head, head head move right there with your, your the, with the ball, and he, he was almost by Michael Dade, but Michael Dade sort of stepped right into him and took that foul. 
Fourth foul on Quincy. First personal on Mike Dave. Dilworth checks out. Kicks back in for Rock Island. 30 seconds left. Third quarter. Rock Island had a four-point halftime lead. Now the Rocks lead by 12. And it looks like Rock Island will hold for the final shot. Hall has it on his left hip. Gets it middle of the floor to Larry Dixon. Coach Siegel barking out instructions to his players. Dixon on the jump circle. Middle of the floor. Joe comes out to challenge. Dixon goes right. Goes high post to Miles. Right back to Dixon. Ball fake penetrate. Now a pass to Miles for the dunk. That was just a set play. Ran perfectly. Long three point by Lincoln Elby off the top of the backboard. Rock Island outscores Quincy in the quarter, 23-13. And the Rocks lead it after 24 minutes, 52-38. Back for the fourth quarter in one minute. Blue Devil Basketball, 103-9 to 5. When Amy's brother passed away, her family went to Hanson Spear Funeral Home. It's not about, you know, the death of the, you know, the family member. It's about celebrating a life. They're very family oriented as well. They're, you know, traditional and they want to make you feel like, you know, you're almost, you know, part of the family. And that's what we really liked. If I had to sum up Hanson Spear in a word, it would be compassionate and loyal. It would be like family. Around here, people matter, and relationships are built on trust. That's the way it is at Town & Country Bank. Real people who like things simple, honest, and done right. And our roots are right here, so we're truly local. If you already do business with us, then you know how good banking can be. And if you're not, well, maybe you should. Town & Country Bank, you'll like how we do business. Part of the HNB Bank family. Order. Rock Island leads Quincy 52-38. Blue Devil Ball. Parker Bland goes left wing to Cameron Gay. Lincoln Elby, Reagan, Tenhouse. And Parker Bland on the floor for Quincy. Elby on a dribble drive. His layup is off the glass. Rolls off the rim. No good. Rebound tip to Alonzo Cole for Rock Island. He gets it to Jason Jones. Jones across the timeline. Will hold up now. Gets it right wing to C.J. Neville. Now to Jason Jones. Has it go through his hands in the backcourt. Turnover on Rock Island. Just lack of concentration on that. That's a simple little pass coming to you. you. Let it go right through your hands. Rock Island added 10 points to their four-point halftime lead. And Jason Jones spent most of that third mm-hmm. quarter on the bench, their point guard. But Tyler Hall had 14 mm-hmm. of Rock Island's 23 points in the third quarter. Mm-hmm. Bland almost traveled. If he Turn. didn't. <laughs> right wing to Job. He'll fire a three and hit a three. That's what we need from Jacob Job. that right there. Didn't and really have his feet set, but no. he managed to drain the three. It's but, 52-41. Quincy trails by 11. That that mm-hmm. outside shot really opens up some stuff on the inside. So slowly work our way back into this. If Rock Island were smart, they'd just be patient and run 30, 35, 40 seconds off the clock. Left wing, Larry Dixon along the baseline now. Cole tried to get it to Hicks in the paint, and it's off his hands out of bounds. Yeah, they, I mean, you, you, don't, you don't need to force it. They're playing right into what we want them to do is hurry up, take a shot and miss to get us back into the ballgame. I think they gave Tyler Hall a brief, a brief blow there, and he's back into the game. And now yeah, Tenhouse right. has a problem. Yeah, he's got blood on him from somewhere. At the bottom of his shorts, which means they're at the top of his knee. Right. So so how, how long do you get to do I that? I believe it's 30 seconds. And since Quincy only has two timeouts left, they can't exactly burn a timeout. Yeah, I'd put a sub in because you're getting awful close right now. I see. So I don't think they really necessarily are strict with that. They want – they uh, uh, most officials realize that, you know, it's no fault of the players. Right. So sometimes they'll give the trainer a little bit extra time to take care of that, and that's what they did here. So Blue Devil ball in backcourt, and Elby will bring it up from pressure from Jason Jones. 52-41, Rock Island leads, 6.45 left to go in the game. Elby goes opposite a high post screen, gets it to Gay far sideline. Gay will take it now middle of the floor. Goes back left wing to Lincoln Elby. Elby looking for a driving lane, has Bland ready to set a screen for him, but instead Gay catches right wing, back to Elby middle of the floor. Elby dribbles to left wing, sizes up Jones. 
Keeps the dribble alive, wants Bland to get the heck out of there. Gay has it middle of the floor, fumbled the pass, now backs it up and resets the offense. Gets the screen from 10 out. Cameron Gay with it right wing, hands it off to Jacob Job. Job thought about a deep three, will dribble drive instead. To the paint, got bumped, throws it up and in. Yeah, he got bumped pretty good, kept his balance, got a nice little running. And Rock Island again, trying to force that down the court. The place right into what we want. Now, I think Coach Siegel said, now, what are we even thinking here? Tenhouse knocked the pass out of bounds right by the Rock Island bench, and Coach Siegel didn't hesitate. I want a timeout. It's a full timeout. 6.06 left to go in the game. It's a 52-43 Rock Island lead back in one minute on 103.9 The Fox. Let's say you got a golfer in the family, and you just don't know what to get him. He's got bags. He's got shoes. He's got new clubs he just bought two weeks ago. Um, he's just went in there, just bought a pull card no, yesterday. But he like, I know he likes golf, and I, I just don't know what to get. So here, I got a perfect solution for you. It's called a gift certificate. We can make the gift certificate any denomination that you want, and it's always good here at r and Golf. When Scott and I purchased these two rocking chairs, our intention was to rock together on our porch in our old age. But when Scott was diagnosed with cancer, our lives drastically changed. When discussing Scott's final wishes, we decided the best choice was Hanson Spear Funeral Home. We liked the home-like setting, and we knew we could trust the Spear family to honor our wishes with a personalized video and the Bible Scott used daily. Hanson Spear even arranged a special time for our granddaughters who were having a difficult time. They took care of everything. Back at Blue Devil Gym, 6.06 left to go in the game. It's a nine-point Rock Island lead, 52-43. Tyler Hall will inbound, or try to anyway, and he pitches it in the backcourt to Jason Jones. Jones with it, LB on him. Devils go man-to-man this possession defensively. Jones trying to beat LB off the dribble, backs it up. Rock Island leading, 52-43, under six minutes to play. On a switch, Jones now guarded by Bland. High post to D'Angelo Hicks, right wing now to Dixon. Further on the wing to Cole, back to Hicks. Stumbles a bit, got fouled, no call. Missed a shot, got his own rebound, lost it. Parker Bland picks it up for Quincy. Rock Island had everything they wanted that time, man, except a converted shot. Yes. Elby penetrates, kicks the 10 outs. He'll drive baseline. Wait, get fouled, throw it up in. It rolls off the rim, no good. Bucket there really makes it interesting, but we got two at the free throw line. I don't know if that's good news or bad news. What's that? Two at the free throw line. Uh Oh, yeah. D'Angelo Hicks called for the foul, his first. It has definitely been an Achilles for us. Team's fifth. Ten out, shoots two. Deep breath, fires and hits. Nothing but net. Ten outs, three for three from the line tonight. 52-44, Rock Island leads by eight. Hicks out. And I didn't see who came in for him. Second free, free throw from 10 outs is good. There you go. Good defense here, boys. 52-45, Rock Island leads. Under five and a half minutes to play in the game. Alonzo Cole has it top of the key. Diagonal pass, right baseline to Jones. He passes back to Dixon. Now underneath, wide open, and a foul called on Cameron Gay. C.J. Neville was left alone on the block and got hammered going up for the shot. Well, at least you don't give up the three-point play there. He made sure that that ball was not going to go into the basket, so just got to be quick thinking defensively, too. You always got to be looking. They're, they're man-to-man defense, the Blue Devils, as C- we miss. C.J. Neville misses the first free throw. Neville on the season was 10 of 11. Now 10 out of 12, obviously. And short with the next free throw, and Bland has the rebound for Quincy. I feel some momentum here if we get a bucket. Albie, across the timeline at the jump circle. Wants to go right wing to Job. Now yo-yos and backs up. Now a bounce pass right wing to Jacob Job. Job sizes up his defender. Goes to Bland. Bland wanted to go to Gay. Now hands off to Gay. Gay does a good Gets job. No, that. over and back. Yeah, I think Coach Douglas is talking about a little uh, touch of the ball, and I think he might be right. I thought Cameron Gay deflected it. Yeah, did he? Yeah, I thought. That's a tough call. I thought Gay deflected the ball over half court and then went back and got it and got called for the over and back. So 52-45 Rock Island leads. Under five minutes to play in the game. Jones floats a pass high post. Uh, Alonzo Cole backdoor cut by Hall. Goes up, misses the layup. Wiley gets his own rebound, puts it up no good. And Tenas has the rebound for Quincy. 
And now Elby gets around one defender. It's a four on three for Quincy. Elby pitches it to the corner. Gay for three. Bingo. There you go. Right back in a timeout for Rock Island, I bet. There you go. And Coach Siegel calls a timeout, and he's really barking at the baseline official. There was contact underneath the basket. I don't blame him for questioning what was going on, but Cameron Gay with a big three. And just like that, it's 52-48. Quincy only trails by four. They have slowly, slowly kept their patience every time down court. They've showed the patience to get the easy bucket. And I think they picked their level up defensively, too. They, they've worked a lot harder defensively and weren't giving up those easy buckets. 10 nothing quarter for Quincy so far here in the fourth. 428 left to go in the game. And now it's a 52-48 Rock Island lead. Jacob Joe, Parker Bland, Cameron Gay, Reagan Tenhouse, and Lincoln Elby on the floor for Quincy. Tyler Hall, Jason Jones, Larry Dixon, C.J. Neville, and Alonzo Cole on the floor for Rock Island. I don't blame Coach Siegel for being upset, but my goodness, your best player had two three-footers and yeah. missed them both. A lot of time left here. A lot of time. Inbounds pass. No pressure at all, and Jones takes the inbounds and walks it up. Lincoln Elby waits for him at the free throw line. Jones with a left-hand dribble. Goes high post to Larry Dixon. Right wing now, Tyler Hall. Up top to C.J. Neville, work it to Jason Jones. Jones between the circles. Right wing and a foul called on a hold as Rock Island really trying to get Tyler Hall something down along the baseline or the blocks, and Jacob Job just basically in a wrestling match with him. Yeah, they're, they're definitely, Jacob Job's done a good job guarding him. That's Ever since we've come out here, that's what he's done here in this fourth quarter. 16 fouls on Quincy. Job has two personals. Cole with it, right wing. Underneath, wide open Dixon gets fouled by Tenhouse, and the ball gets stuck. I don't know that I've ever seen the ball hit the rim, then get wedged between yeah. the rim and the backboard. That was odd. Maybe it just had that perfect spin. Foul was on Tenhouse, his second, team seventh. So Larry Dixon will shoot two free throws here and makes the first. I can't remember the last time I saw a ball hit the rim yeah. and then get wedged between the rim and the backboard. Dixon's second free throw. Good. Dixon goes two for two. Stems the tide a bit as it's 54-48. Rock Island leads. Stop. Less than half of the fourth quarter to play. Yeah, stop the 10 over run there for the Blue Devils. Elby with it. Left side of the offense. Gets a high screen from Bland. Elby yo-yos with the ball. Gets it top of the key Cameron Gay. Gay back to Elby right side of the offense. Elby takes it middle of the floor and resets the offense. Elby trying to use the screen. Had a driving lane, gets it to Bland. Bland wide open 15. Back passes to Cameron Gay. Elby gets around Jason Jones. To Cameron Gay. Thought about a three. Goes back to Lincoln Elby. Coach Douglas calls a set from the sideline. Got to be, be perfect here, I think. Devils go four across from sideline to sideline. Gay goes high post to Parker Bland. Bland will avoid Job and go to Cameron Gay right wing. Gay got a pick from 10 outs, didn't use it. Gay gets it to Elby just inside the timeline. That was close. 310 left to go in the game. Quincy trails 54-48. Bland with a high post screen. Elby tried to go opposite. Now another screen by Bland. They run, pick and roll. Bland to the basket. Missed the shot, but got fouled. Yeah, he took it strong to the basket. That was a nice, nice play. Patient play is the word I want to use. They, they were waiting for that good drive, that good chance, and they got it, but unfortunately it didn't go in. Foul on Alonzo Cole, his third, team six. Parker Bland is the line to shoot two. Bland is two out of six from the line tonight. Free throw short. No good. Bland came in six out of ten from the line. He's now missed five free throws tonight. He's now eight out of 17. Missed the second. Back iron and out. Two of eight right for there. Parker Bland tonight. 54-48, Rock Island leads. Less than three minutes to play in the game. Ball head and shoulder freight. Trying to get around Job as the Devils are man-to-man -man this defensive possession. Dixon with it, top of the key. Hands it off to Neville. Neville gets around Elby, takes it to the hoop for a left-hand ah, layup. Strong basket. He went good to the basket as Lincoln Elby quickly gets down. Now tries to force a pass to Reagan. Pin out underneath the basket, but Rock Island's hands knock it away. They've got the ball deep in their own half of the court. 56-48. The Rock Island leads by eight. Rocks have the ball. Now Dixon has a wide open driving lane down the middle. Gets it to Neville. Baseline jumper is on the way and good. Just like that. That, that. 
they are explosive with those points. That's a big turnaround, those two missed free throws. Quincy could narrow it to four with the two converted free throws. Now they trail by 10 to the Blue Devils, 58-48. Elby trapped, needs to call timeout, and Coach Douglas does. 2.08 left to go in the game. And it's a full timeout for Quincy. We'll keep it right here. 58-48, Rock Island leads. With 2.08 left to go in the game, and Quincy has one timeout remaining. Go back to your point that we were talking about. It was 54-48, right? Right. We had a very good possession down there. Parker Bland took it to the basket, got fouled, so he shoot two free throws, and we missed those two, and since then they've run off, what, six straight? Four straight. Four straight. That, that was a big, big turning point. I like well, what we were doing offensively. It's just been nice to get the two points out of that whole possession. Bland misses two free throws. Rock Island comes down, gets an easy basket. Quincy turns it over. Rock Island comes down, gets an easy basket. Well, actually, uh, Neville took one of those no, 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 yes jumpers from the baseline. Yeah, if it goes in, it's a great shot. If it doesn't, it's why you do that. Yeah. So, again, 58-48, Rock Island leads. 2.08 left to go in the game. Quincy has one timeout left. Rock Island has three. But really, the Rock's up double digits. You're probably only going to be calling timeout to avoid five-second count. Right. Where, so. where, where are we at with timeouts, Quincy? One left. One. Jobel inbound at the end of the Quincy bench near sideline. Gets it into Lincoln Albion backcourt. It's LB, Dade, Joe, Bland, and Tenhouse on the floor for Quincy. Tenhouse catches between the circles. Gets it to Bland high post. Backdoor play to LB. Fumbled the pass a bit. And then Job didn't look it into his hands. And it goes out of bounds to Rock Island. Yeah, I think Lincoln had that drive to the basket, but he sort of lost it. Then he pitched it, pitched it right across court. And I think Jacob was thinking shot before he even got it in his hands, and it went right through his hands right into the person sitting in the bleachers. Jones slides to a stop as Quincy once again goes man-to-man. Jones gets around Dade all the way to the hoop, got grabbed by Parker Bland. I think they would have counted that, too, if it went in. I think he, so just put up, he just put up two fingers on a shot. So, Right now the problem for Quincy is Rock Island's picked apart their zone, so Quincy goes man-to-man. There's a couple of Quincy defenders that just cannot hang with Rock Island's quickness. Well, that, that's something you have to look at next week in your in your practice is the, the film and say, what are we doing wrong with our zone? Why are we not getting out there? And man-to-man, where's our weak side help and drop side help? So right now, Rock Island's just taking advantage of it. That's the easiest way to say it. Jason Jones is one out of three from the line tonight, eight out of 16 for the season. Second free throw, no good. Now we've got to be smart and patient, but you got to hurry up because if your clock <laughs> is your enemy right now. 95 seconds left to go in the game. Quincy trails 58-48, and there's only one timeout left. I'll be with it. On the wing, gets it to Bland. In the paint, goes up strong, missed the shot. Rebound Neville for Rock Island. Neville back pat tracks. Now picks up his dribble and shovels it to Jason Jones. Go ahead and foul Jones. He's yeah, one I out agree. of four from the line. Okay. Timeout Rock Island, 30-second timeout as they were not organized offensively. So Coach Siegel burns a 30-second timeout, so the Rocks have two timeouts left. Interesting. He's all over his star there, and, you know, rightfully so. He wants something to run, you're going to run it. it. It may not be, you know, we've got a 10-point lead with a minute to go, but what if you're in a tie ball game and you're trying to run something and you're not you're not mentally sharp? And I think that's one the correction timeout that he's using right there is, is making a point as far as we've got to be on the same page, everybody, and you had your star standing way over on the other side, not doing what he was supposed to. And he's still barking with one of the assistant coaches. Talking about Tom Siegel, yeah. Rock Island's head coach, and star Tyler Hall, who had 13 points, 14 points in the third quarter, has yet to score here in the fourth quarter. And again to reset, it's Rock Island leading 58-48, a minute 16 left to go in the game. Two timeouts for Rock Island, one for Quincy. Jones catches in backcourt, hounded by Dade. Jones stops, gets it left wing to Cole. Now to Tyler Hall, middle of the floor, guarded by Joe. Hall with a jab step. Still has the ball, hasn't dribbled yet. Hall will fade to the far sideline. Now crosses over, takes off down the lane, fouled by Job. So one and bonus for Tyler Hall. Job's third personal. 19th foul on Quincy. Tyler Hall for the season is two out of five from the charity stripe. I, I, I like what we did defensively, but at the same time, if you're going to foul... Try not to let as much time run off that clock. Get up there and try to get your steal. And if he makes that quick move, then then follow him off that. He probably ran off, what, 8, 10 seconds right there? Almost 18 seconds yeah. between the timeout 
And the foul. And Hall misses the free throw. Be human. 58-48. Quincy trails by 10. Under a minute to play. Actually, 50 seconds left. Date has it far wing. Oh, and he gets bailed out mm. as Neville's car for the foul. And now Mike Dade will shoot the one in bonus. Dade lowered his shoulder. Yes, he did. He was going to try and make a move, and Neville poked the ball away, and the official said it was a, a foul and not a steal. So Mike Dade will be at the line to shoot the one in bonus. His first free throw attempts of the game. Dade is three out of nine for the season. Fires and hits. Dade with nine points. And he now has scored in every quarter. Dade's second free throw in the air. Good. Ten points for Mike Dade. Eight-point Rock Island lead at 58-50. 43 seconds left to go. Here's Dixon across the timeline. He's double-teamed. Picks up his dribble. Nice pass to Neville who goes up and scores from the left side of the basket with his right hand. Neville with 16 points, 10-point lead for Rock Island. Elby gets it to Job, 22-footer right wing, bingo. Timeout, Quincy, Quincy's final timeout. Is it a 30? You're standing. Yes, it is, a 30-second timeout. 26 seconds left to go in the game, Quincy trails, 60-53. Job has 8 points in the quarter, 11 in the game. The thing that you look at as a coach, Ronald, you look at three possessions right here. You, you, you've got to, on that, as soon as that inbounds pass comes in, you either steal it or you're going to foul because you can't afford to have much time run off that clock. Double bonus on every foul now for Quincy. So Rock Island shooting two free throws the rest of this game. 60-53, Rock Island leads. 26 seconds left. Blue Devils out of timeouts. Rock Island has two timeouts left. So basically if Quincy makes a shot, Rock Island could just take four seconds to get that ball inbounds. Yep. Jones takes the ball from the official, gets it into Cole. Back to Jones. Somebody's got to go foul somebody. Yeah. Elby reached on Jones, no foul. Now wide open underneath Neville for the yeah. reverse layup. I think you got to get that foul as soon as that ball comes inbound. Neville with eight points in the quarter, 18 in the game. Gay with it left wing, penetrates to the paint. His runner is off the glass, and it rolls off the rim no good. Neville with the rebound with five seconds left, foul by Mike Dave. Tough, tough fourth quarter. Third quarter is what did yeah, Quincy, yeah. yeah. Th third quarter, definitely, but we got back into the fourth quarter and just couldn't take advantage of some things. I'll go back to that 54-48, and we'll talk to Coach Douglas about that. That was, just, that was just a big, big moment in that ball game where you'd worked so hard to get back after giving up so many points. What was it, 23-13 in the third quarter? It was. Yeah, 23-13. Neville went one out of two from the line. He now has 19 points to tie Tyler Hall. LB over underneath the 10 house for the layup at the buzzer, and that'll do it. 63-55, Rock Island defeats Quincy. Or the Rocks are now 4-1 and one on the season, 1-0 and oh in the Western Big Six. Quincy now 3-1 and one on the season, 0-1 oh in the conference. 63-55, Rock Island wins it. Back in two minutes with the postgame show, Blue Devil Basketball, 103-9-5. When Amy's brother passed away, her family went to Hanson Spear Funeral Home. It's not about, you know, the death of the, you know, the family member. It's about celebrating a life. They're very family oriented as well. They're, you know, traditional and they want to make you feel like, you know, you're almost, you know, part of the family. And that's what we really liked. If I had to sum up Hanson Spear in a word, it would be compassionate and loyal. It would be like family. It's coming to Quincy, and it's a game changer. Fiber is the fastest technology available, and Adams is bringing fiber to the home. Nothing else compares to fiber, and Adams will be connecting Quincy neighborhoods to this lightning-fast internet and telephone service with no gimmick pricing and local service. Find out how your neighborhood can become a fiber hood. Just take the quick survey at followthefiber.net. Adams, the better and now faster way to connect. When Andy Douglas became the head coach of the Quincy High Blue Devils, he wanted a fresh start and a new look, starting with a locker room. 
the first place he called was Landmarks. You're looking at the finished product. Wallpicks logos, inspirational quotes, and even window treatments. Each application was custom designed and installed by Landmarks right here in Quincy. The window treatments are, are one of my favorite parts. They got uh, kind of the wood feel. Uh, we're able to see out uh, and see what's going on in the locker room and uh, the players can't see in, so that's kind of a special thing. But, uh, has one of our favorite quotes on it, the image of one projects the image of all. It's a quote that we use with our program, our players. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a great addition to our locker room. It, it, it adds a lot of spice to it. Wall picks, screen printing, embroidering, vehicle wraps. Let Landmarks give your home or office or locker room a fresh new look. Landmarks, make your mark. Federated Insurance is a lot like the family businesses we help protect. For 105 years and counting, Federated has shared the common values that have served our clients well. Federated Insurance, it's our business to protect yours. Call Tony Reese in Quincy at 223-4623. Farm agent Charles Schultz can help get you to a better state. From cost to coverage, Charles can develop a plan just for you. This is Charles Schultz. Call me at 224-6665 or drop by my office next to County Market at 48th and Broadway. And together, we'll review your insurance needs. 224-6665. 